The readings today are pretty exhausting. We start with Joe, who's tossing and turning. He can't sleep at all. And then we have Paul, who's preaching incessantly. Woe to me if I don't preach. Reaching out to be everything to everyone. And then the gospel, we have Simon's mother-in-law. The moment she's cured, no break, she has to get up and serve them. And Jesus tries to escape, to get a little bit of peace and quiet, but they hunt him down. He has to go on preaching and healing. So it looks as if being a Christian is a thoroughly draining business. The needs of our world are endless. Ever more people are suffering from anxiety, depression, mental illness. Our streets are filled with homeless people to whom we would want to reach out. But if we do, aren't we going to drown in what Sam Wells calls the boundless ocean of need? Aren't we going to be swallowed up by the endless needs of people? And so the temptation is to say, enough is enough. I can do no more. But at the core of Jesus' existence, of who he is, is the Sabbath of God. And the Sabbath for Jesus isn't the little break that he takes at the end of the week to recharge his batteries for the next lot of work. He is always resting in his Father's peace as his Father rests in him. And he goes into the wilderness periodically to taste that peace which is the very core of his being. It's his joy. It's the source of Jesus' joy. G.K. Chesterton said, there was something that Jesus constantly covered by abrupt silence or impetuous isolation. There was one thing too great for God to show us when he walked on earth. And I sometimes fancy that is his mirth. We too will be only able to respond to all those calls upon us, those needy people, if we find time to taste God's Sabbath. Not sitting on the sofa, watching mindless stuff on the television. Most of the time, being in silence, saying nothing, thinking nothing, very hard to attain, and just being with the Father, who wishes just to be with us. It's very hard, especially if you're raising a young family. Maybe some parts of times in one's life, it's not possible. But the busier we are, the more we need to find times to return to that center of our being, which is God's quiet, his rest. Instead of Pope Francis, spends three hours a day in silent prayer. And it's not that he hasn't got anything else to do. So Jesus' response to people springs from his interior resting with the Father. And his combat with the demons is for peace. Because in Jewish thought of the time, there was an intrinsic enmity between the demonic and God's Sabbath. It's the early tradition said the demons were created on the eve of the Sabbath, and they always tried to destroy it. So when you look at Job, there he is tossing and turning, when will I arise? The night drags on. I'm filled with restlessness until dawn. It's not just that Satan has robbed him 
of his wealth and his family, he's taken his peace. Our society, 24-7, agitated, restless, always pestered by our iPhones and our emails and our Instagram and WhatsApp, that's almost like a demonic force, not letting us rest in each other and in God. Thomas Merton said the rush and pressure of modern life are perhaps the most common form of its violence. We're tormented by FOMO, the fear of missing out. This is the modern equivalent of what the Desert Fathers called the Noonday Devil. Oh, if only I was somewhere else, it would be much better. Or if I was someone else, I would be happy. St. Augustine says that without the Sabbath, we are like people tormented by gnats. Seamus Heaney, that wonderful Irish poet, a friend of this community, talked of his need to fence off a field of silence and graze in it. And the busier we are, the more we need to do that, to find that enclave, that space of quiet and stillness. Otherwise, we won't achieve anything with all our business. And then we shall discover how to respond to those who are in need without drowning in the boundless ocean of need. <laughs>